I just finished explaining to some students how to approach question 7 on hog, which is the announce highest function, and I thought I'd share that explanation with the rest of you. So you have your play function, and here's like a very simplified version of what you've probably written, which is that you have score 0 and score 1, oh sorry, start out at 0, and then uh, you have some say function that comes in, that's your commentary function. And you probably notice that in the while loop that continues until the game ends, you might adjust score 0 and score 1 in various ways, and then eventually you say score 0, score 1. That's how you call a commentary function. And then, by the way, you get some value back here. What I'm going to do now is write a version of play that doesn't contain a while statement, but instead just manipulates score 0 directly. That's a caricature of how play actually works, but it's going to allow us to actually run through this example in Python Tutor. So instead of having a while statement, I'm just going to say that occasionally score 0 changes. So maybe score 0 went up by 10 points. And then we say score 0, score 1. And just for simplicity, I'm going to forget about player 1 for a while and just focus on what happens to score 0. Let's say on their next turn they score 8 points. And then we say score 0, score 1 again. And then they score some more points, let's say 12 points. So total, they're up to 30 points, and we've called our commentary function each time. And instead of writing announce fiest, I'm just going to write a function that says announce the gain. The gain for player 0. So the gain is how much they gained. But what we're going to see is the total score. So we saw 0 at the beginning when we initialized this, and then we'll see 10, and then 18, and then 30. But we want to print out the 10, the 8, and the 12, which is the gain that they made. So we need to know what their score was before say was called so that we can compute the difference. That's why we're going to keep track of a previous score. We're going to define a say function. This is what is actually going to get called inside the body of play. It has to take score 0 and score 1 as arguments because that's how it's called. And what we'll do here is just ignore score 1 for a while and compute the gain as the score 0 as it is now minus the previous score. And then we'll print it out. Player 0 gain. Finally, following the example of announcing lead changes, we're going to construct a new save function. We're going to do it by calling announce gain for player 0. And we're going to use a new value for previous score. What we're doing here is we're constructing a new save function that will be called later. How exactly it will be called later, I haven't showed you yet, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Announcing gain for player 0 using a new previous score is going to be called when there's more score added. The previous score then is the current score now. So we're going to pass in a new value for previous score, which is the current score, and then the game will advance, and then we'll have a new current score, and that old score will be the previous score. And this is the way that we keep track of the previous score. You might want to be changing it in this way. You might want to say, okay, previous score is now the new score. But this won't work. The reason this doesn't work is because you'll get an error. Let me show you the error really quick. So let's pretend this isn't there, and let's just count, call announce gain for player 0 on uh, previous score of 0, and then we'll say what happens when uh, player 0 now has 10 points. Okay, we're not even going to use play. We're just going to see what happens when we create announce gain for player 0, which returns the save function, and then we call the save function, and then we reach this line. It says gain equals score 0 minus previous score. You get this error that says previous score reference before assignment, and that might seem crazy because previous score is right here, and it's already bound. 
but the fact that you have an assignment statement that says assign previous score in the say frame somewhere in the body of say makes this previous score unaccessible because previous score will exist soon enough in this frame. So that's just a quirk of Python that says within the body of a function, you can't refer or read a value here and also write the same name here because previous score either has to exist here or up here. It can't be both at the same time. So instead of assigning previous score, we're going to bind previous score to this new value. Right, look at the difference between these two. So previous score equals score zero versus pass score zero in for previous score. It's exactly the same logic, except for this one we're allowed to do. So let's watch what happens when I call uh, announce gain with a previous score of zero, and then I try to say 10 zero. Then I'll compute the gain is 10 because we went from zero to 10. We'll print that out, player zero gain 10. And then we're going to call announce gain for player zero with a new previous score. So in this way, we're binding previous score to a new value and we're creating a new say function that has the parent equal to F3, meaning it knows about this updated previous score. That's the way we'll keep track of changing information inside of a commentary function. Now, why on earth would we do it this way? Well, it's because we want play to have the job of updating the scores and deciding when it's time to say something. And then we want this logic just to explain what to say and what information to keep track of. So instead of creating announce gain for player zero and then calling it, I'm going to play the game with initial scores of zero and zero and then this commentary function. Let's see what happens. So. In the way that I've written it here, we're going to define these functions. We're going to create the say, and then we're going to call play using this say function that we've generated. But I could get it all on the screen. There we go. Okay. And then play starts doing some work. So this is the only place where the score is kept track of. And then we say here, these are the current scores. We're inside the body. We compute the gain correctly. We print out the gain correctly. Here we're going to return a new function, but notice I don't do anything with that new function and so it is lost. So I created a new function with a new previous score and I returned it, but it didn't update the say that play is going to use. Instead we're using the old say and that means we're stuck with the old previous score. So something needs to change. Instead of just calling this function, I need to store the result and I need to call that next time. And I need to store this result and I need to call that next time. This pattern where we return a function and that function is used later and then I return a function from that and that function is used later is actually going to store the information that I need in order to print out the right thing. So our goal was to print out that player zero gain 10 and then eight and then 12. Let's fast forward a bunch and that's exactly what this prints out. Player zero gain 10, eight, 12. Let's understand how it did it. When we called play, we called say, say created a new return value, which is the, the same say function, the same logic, except for with a new parent, this parent F4 remembers that the last time say was called, the previous score was 10 instead of the previous score being zero, which means that, and here's the key part, f is bound to this new say function that was returned, and that means when we call say the second time, we're calling a different say, and this say knows that its parent is f4, it has a different previous score, and so when it computes the gain, it's gonna be a gain of eight, which is the gain that you got in that turn. So even though it's only exposed to the score, total score 18, it knows how many points player zero already had and can compute the difference. It then makes a new frame remembering the 18. We make another call to say, and this time we get a gain of 12 with a current score of 30, subtracting out the previous score of 18 in the parent F6. 
which was used because we bound g to the function with the parent frame f6. Now your logic for announce highest is going to have to be more complicated. Handle both players at once. You don't actually handle both players in the same function. Instead, you establish who you want to keep track of And then within say, you can check what who is. If who is zero, you only care about score zero. And you can compute the gain for this person who's zero. If on the other hand, who is one, you might care about a different score. And if you're writing announce gain such that it always works for a particular player, then you just keep who the same in both cases, but you would want to update the score as you go. So that's one change you'll need to get right if you want announce highest to work correctly. There's some other changes like keeping track of the largest gain that you've seen for that player so far. I'll leave that part to you, but hopefully the general structure of the function makes sense now, and it's how we're going to keep track of information without using assignment statements, instead putting that information inside of functions so that those functions can be called later. Now, your play function is also not going to look like f equals say, g equals f, etc. You're going to have to find some way of embedding that logic inside of a while loop, and that's question six. Okay, good luck.